Hey there, today I want to show you how to generate your own meshes. You can use this to generate for example 3D tracks or a platform for a 3D endless runner. So let's start with the first cube. All meshes are built with vertices points and triangles. So let's start first with the vertices points. I highlighted them here with red and blue. Blue is always the bottom right vertice point. So a cube has 8 vertices points. One, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven, and eight. So always keep that in mind when we go on. So to build up our mesh, we first have to make a vertices list. Vertices are represented as vector three coordinates. And because lists starts at zero, we also start at zero in our mind. And we also save the last vertices in a separate variable. In this case, it's 4, 5, 6 and 7. So now our mesh would look like this. And if I don't highlight the vertices points, it will look like this. Nothing there. So we have to build the faces with triangles. So to build a triangle, we have to know the index of every vertices point. Because triangles go from one index to another. For example, from 0 to 1 and then to 2. That's the first triangle. The second one will be 2, 1 and 3. This will be the front face of our mesh. For the right side we have to do for example 0, 2, 6 and 6, 4, 0. We can store these triangle indexes in an integer list. If we want our cube fully covered we end up with 36 indexes. So now that we have the vertices points and the triangles we can build our mesh. For the mesh we need a mesh filter and a mesh object. We create a mesh object, give it a name, in this case track, and then assign the mesh to the mesh filter. Then we calculate our vertices and triangles and assign them to the mesh vertices and the mesh triangles. So now if we hit reset or call the reset method, we always have a cube. And if a material is assigned, we can go around this cube and see it from every angle. But we don't just want a cube. We want to expand this mesh forward or with curves left and right. So let's do this. To expand the mesh forward it's pretty simple. We just need the direction and how far we should expand it. We can get this from our bottom right and our pre-bottom right. So all we have to do now is get through our list of last vertices points which are 4 and then add a direction to every vertices point. And after that of course add this new vertices points to our global vertices list. So now we have four new vertices points, which have to be triangulated. But before we can add new triangles, we have to remove the triangle back face, because we don't want a face rendered inside our mesh. So we save the triangle back faces indices, and then go through the last 24 triangles. We can just copy them and add four to every triangle, because we have four vertices points added. After we added everything, we can add back our back face triangles, but with an addition of 4. So after we recalculated the vertices and the triangles, we have to assign them back to the mesh. And then recalculate our normals and our UVs. I will explain it in a second. The reassignment has to be done after every direction change. So I put this in a public expand method. So now it gets tricky. To expand our mesh in a circular way, like a curve, we first have to get the distance between our bottom right and our bottom left. And then take this distance to the right and calculate the center of it. This will be the center of our circle. After that, we can calculate a radius from our center point to our bottom right. And add vertice points on this circle. So in our turn right method, we first define how much points we want in our curve. Then get the bottom right and the bottom left and calculate our radius and our center position. We also have a center direction because we don't always go forward and this will help us if we go in another direction. So after that we create a for loop with our turn vertices points. And in this for loop we have to go through our list of last vertices points. And because we have right and left points we have to switch the radius from 1 to 2. After that we can calculate the angle with math p and then calculate our x and z position with math sinus and math cosinus. 
Now we can add our center direction and set the y position to the last vertice y position. And as in our expand forward method, we have to update the last vertices and our global vertices list. And of course, our triangles. So turn left is pretty much the same, just the other way around. So now we can build meshes with forward, left and right. And if we combine this method, we also can generate random tracks. You can find the full code on GitHub with the link in the description. So have fun generating. So I hope you learned something new today. Subscribe to watch more tutorials and I'm sure I see you in the next.